All right, now the key to solving this problem is to ask yourself, what was the velocity of object D when it got back to the height of the cliff? We know that when object D left the cliff going up, it was going at 3 meters per second up. Uh, eventually, it's going to get back to that same height. So what's going to be its velocity when it gets back to that same height? Well, here we use the symmetry of projectile motion. And this is an issue we talked about on the previous example as well. These two points are at the same height above the ground. Um, so if the velocity over here was 3 meters per second, uh, when we were uh, three, if the velocity here was 3, if the speed here was 3 meters per second, um, then the speed here should also be 3 meters per second. Two points at the same height should have the same speed. That's part of the symmetry of projectile motion. So the velocity at this point would be negative 3 meters per second. I erased some stuff over here to give myself some more room. So here's the information about the objects. Object B was thrown down at 3 meters per second. Object D was thrown up at 3 meters per second. So we just figured out um, that object D was thrown up at 3 meters per second. So when it reaches the same height going down, it's going to be going at negative 3 meters per second velocity. Um, but I hope you can see then that for the rest of its path, it's going to be imitating exactly what object B did. Notice that object B, when it, um, when it passed, um, object B at this point was going negative 3 meters per second, and object D at this height is also going to be going negative 3 meters per second. That means that now from this point on, we would expect both of these objects to always have the same velocities at every single point. Since at this height, this object is moving down at 3 meters per second, and this object is also moving down at 3 meters per second, we would expect that they would have the same velocities at this point too, and at this point. Um, so any two points that we choose, um, now on these downward paths, these two objects should have the same velocity. Um, and as a result of that, which object is going to be moving faster when they hit the ground? Well, the answer is they're both, both going to be moving at the same speed. They're both going to be moving at the same speed. Since they both have the same speed at this height now, uh, they both have a speed of 3 meters per second, and they both have the same velocity, negative 3 meters per second and negative 3 meters per second. However much gravity speeds up this object before it hits the ground, that's the same amount that gravity is going to have to speed up this object before it hits the ground. So which object is going to be moving faster when they hit the ground? Neither. They're both going to hit the ground at the same speed. Both object B and object D are going to hit the ground at the same speed. And the key here was to use the symmetry of projectile motion. Originally, object D was uh, moving up at 3 meters per second. But this portion of the path doesn't really concern us that much. What really concerns us now is what's happening to object D when it's moving on its downward path. Well, at this point, when it's at the height of the cliff, when it's at the height of the cliff, object D is moving at 3 meters per second downwards. Now, object D at the height of the cliff is moving at 3 meters per second downwards, but that's the same speed that object B was moving at when it was at the height of the cliff. So since they're both at the same speed when they're at the height of the cliff, they should also be at the same speed when they hit the ground. So I'll say that one more time. Um, Object D on its downward path, on its downward path, when object D is at the height of the cliff, its velocity is negative 3 meters per second. Uh, but object B also had a velocity of negative 3 meters per second when it was at the height of the cliff. So since they're both at the same velocity when they're at the height of the cliff, they should both be at the same velocity when they hit the ground. Both object B and object D have the same velocity when they're at the height of the cliff uh, when object D is on its downward path. So they should both also have the same velocity when they hit the ground. I hope you can see how we can use symmetry here to solve this problem without having to use any equations. Um, this is a really good test for whether you're building some intuition and understanding for projectile motion. We don't want to be in a situation where we're just memorizing formulas and just plugging into the formulas. Uh, for one thing, obviously, you're not really learning much physics if you're just plugging into the formulas. And also, as a practical matter, um, you can expect that on your exams, you're going to see problems that are a little bit different uh, and a little bit harder than what you've seen in your homework. How can you adapt to a problem that's a little bit different or a little bit harder than you've seen before? Well, you can't adapt unless you're building some intuition and common sense for the problems that you're working on. Um, so far, the problems that I've been giving you about projectile motion have all been really easy. I've just been giving you very easy projectile motion problems. You could definitely see harder problems on the exam, but how can you adapt to those harder problems? Well, it's going to be hard to adapt unless you have some intuition and understanding of projectile motion. So the purpose of this conceptual example is to help you build more understanding and intuition for the symmetry of projectile motion. I think this example is actually kind of cool. I think this is kind of cool. Um, uh, it's kind of cool that um, it doesn't matter whether something is thrown up at 3 meters per second or down at 3 meters per second. 
Either way, they're both going to hit the ground at the same speed. That's kind of a little bit surprising uh, from when you first looked at it. Um, you might have thought that since this was thrown up and this was thrown down, this should hit the ground with a greater speed. But it doesn't turn out that way because if you're thrown up at 3 meters per second, eventually when you get back down to the same height, you will be moving down at 3 meters per second. So it actually doesn't really matter whether you're thrown up at 3 meters per second or down at 3 meters per second. Both of those objects will hit the ground at the same speed. I think that's kind of neat and unexpected. Um, so it's nice to have that intuition now for projectile motion. I hope that this problem uh, helps to convince you that it's very useful to draw the paths of objects and to try to write down what you know about the paths. I think it was very useful here to compare the path of object B with the path of object D. And especially it was useful to say, well, we know that object D at this point has got a velocity of positive 3. The crucial point was when we realized that at this point, object D had a velocity of negative 3 meters per second. So try to get in the habit of drawing the path uh, of the objects that you're dealing with in any problem. And if there's more than one object, you want to draw more than one path. All right, here's another conceptual problem. Uh, remember that object C is being thrown down at 5 meters per second from the cliff. And now let's think about object E. That's a new object. Object E is being thrown up at 5 meters per second from the cliff. So again, all of these objects are being thrown from this height, and then eventually they're hitting the ground. All of the objects that we're thinking about here are being thrown from the height of the cliff, and then eventually they're going to end up hitting the ground. Object C is being thrown straight down at 5 meters per second, and object E is being thrown straight up at 5 meters per second. Again, my question is, which object is moving faster when it hits the ground? Please pause the video and give that some thought. Uh, this is really the same exact idea as the previous problem. I just want to make sure that you've digested the lesson from the previous problem. Um, they should both hit the ground at the same speed. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you're thrown down or thrown up. All that really matters is the initial speed that you were thrown at. Uh, even, the one, uh, even though this is being thrown up at 5 meters per second, we know that eventually when it's on its downward path, when it's at the height of the cliff, it's going to be moving down at 5 meters per second. So again, we can draw the paths of the objects. We know that object C is starting by with a velocity of negative 5 meters per second, and then it's going to speed up until it hits the ground. Object E is starting with a velocity of positive 5 meters per second. Again, we decided to choose up as the positive direction. Mm -hmm. Object E had started up with a velocity of positive 5 meters per second, but eventually it's going to have to start moving down. Um, so what's its velocity going to be when it gets back to this height of the cliff? Well, we know from symmetry that when it gets back to the height of the cliff, its velocity will be negative 5 meters per second. The height that it had when it was originally at, uh, I'm sorry, the speed that it had when it was originally at this height has to be the same as the speed that it has when it passes this height coming back down. These two points are at the same height, so they have to have the same speed. Again, that's the symmetry of projectile motion. Two points at the same height have to have the same speed. In projectile motion, two points at the same height have to have the same speed. That's part of our symmetry. Um, they don't have to have the same velocity, because velocity also indicates direction. Uh, but they have the same speed of 5 meters per second, and one of them has a velocity that's upward, and one has a velocity that's downward. All right. Uh, and now we can see that from this point on, what happens to object E is going to look exactly, what happened, exactly like what happened to object C. Um, again, object C is um, starting at the height of the cliff and moving down at 5 meters per second. And object E here is also at the height of the cliff and moving down at 5 meters per second. Um, since they're both at the same height and they're both moving down at the same speed, by the time they hit the ground, they should still be going at the same speed. Um, so which object is going to be moving faster when they hit the ground? Neither. Again, both of them will be moving at uh, the same speed. Again, this is just a repeat of the previous problem. I just wanted to reinforce the same ideas all over again. 